that psychological problems their entire life, and when this deep psychotherapy has happened, it's because they weren't wanted as a child. And no, they didn't even know it because their parents were relatively uh, quiet about that. And so when you start to see this, this is, this is cracking to a whole other level. You've never ever had the ability to consider this, no less be able to do it. Yes. Uh, I want to. I, I have a uh, friend of mine, a 75-year-old guy, and um, I was in his hospital over from two weeks ago. He has stage four uh, liver cancer. Right. He's filling with fluid. He's and the oncologist said, "There's nothing we can do for you." At least the oncologist is right. There's nothing oncology. And, and he said uh, chemotherapy because his wife asked. He said that'll just kill him faster. Good doctor. Yeah, but my, my question is, they just want to get a second opinion now, they're going to go get chemo, but my question is, do you believe that uh, getting on this diet could reverse it? Jim, Jim is at the Institute right now. Jim came to us five and a half years ago. He's a guy about my age. He, had, he was on the liver transplant list at the University of Pennsylvania. He's completely free of cancer five and a half years ago. Jim is willing to talk to your friends. But talking until you're blue in the face doesn't make any difference. You've got to have guts, and I won't say it, but it starts with a B, to do this. And if you, do, you have that, we're the place for you. If not, don't even come. Because if you're expecting magic, any doctor that would give somebody with an advanced liver cancer or brain cancer, or pretty much any cancer, chemotherapy, shame on them. They're money-grubbing bastards, is what they are. Because that doesn't help, ever. Well, the problem, yeah, actually, his wife was supposed to come here tonight, and she opted out. She said, we went to another doctor, so we're going to get a second opinion. I found out today, he agreed to the chemo. Of course, so. you always find a shyster. Yeah. <laughs> You'll always find a shyster. <laughs> and it's frustrating, because when you know, that, you know, we went to a park of Jake Newby and I, and I we saw people stage four cancer, mm -hmm. and we saw amazing things happen. So, I mean, my life has been a, a voyage of, of love. I mean, I just, every day I bounce out of bed, I just can't wait to see what happens next. You know, people like Gerard bring me to tears. But Gerard has the personality, the courage, the chutzpah to do it. You can't just sit around and say, oh, make me well, give me an herb. It's not going to work. This takes a lot of courage to do this stuff. Yes? I've been trying to eat whole foods and Less and less meat, but I'm having a hard time keeping the weight on. Do I look like I'm too thin? No. I ate one meal a day, love. Something called weightlifting. Everyone did it till four generations ago. If you're still looking at food to put weight on your body, you're looking in the wrong direction. Food that's healthy ought never to put weight on your body. Somebody says, I'm eating this diet for two years and you're fat, you're full of baloney. Nobody gets fat eating healthy food. But bottom line is, you need, and you look perfectly fine to me, you need muscle. And by the way, you have the perfect body to get osteoporosis, even on my diet. Without what? Weightlifting. Weightlifting. Weightlifting is the key to this whole thing, I'm going to tell you. And so, it can be a confusing world because Dr. Atkins taught a lot of very uh, less than ethical people the old trick. Teach people, tell people what they want to hear, and you can sell millions of dollars of stuff. So you have a lot of modern, the paleo diet, which was created completely by the Texas Cattlemen Association. They handpicked a lecturer. This has nothing to do with reality. You know, and basically you can get confused out there. Or you can do what I did. In 1975, I said, who has the most experience? Who has the best results? And I moved to Boston, Massachusetts, and joined the Institute. We're the oldest organization in the world, 61 years. More people have come to us and reversed catastrophic disease than any healthcare system in the history of humanity. And we collect data. Uh, we can't publish it or they kill us. <laughs> yes? Uh, the myelin that affects the uh, MS. The myelin sheet. Yes. yes. Um, is it true that you could create that in the brain for people who age? And they say that by doing a certain um, exercise with your fingers, did you ever hear of that? Yes, yes. That's something we teach. But let's let's talk about the myelin sheath 
Okay, you're talking about. It's made by phosphorus. So all the nervous system basically has phosphorus around it. If I take the nerves out of your body or any of our bodies, it goes around the planet seven times. You have massive amounts of nerves, but it's phosphorus that you need. In the brain, it's a whole different story. This has to do with dementia, Alzheimer's disease. You need glutamine, you need B12, you need uh, oleic acid, which is essential fatty acids. And where essential fatty acids should come from is where the fish get it from, the algae, not the fish. By the way, in my book, Killer Fish, I write about 20 to 30 minutes after you extract fish oil from a fish, it's a carcinogen. You look at the studies that were done in Finland on fish and fish oil, the men that basically took it had three times more prostate cancer, two and a half times more breast uh, uh, heart attacks. You look at Harvard University studies, but you don't hear that from the holistic guys because they don't know anything about nutrition. They just go along with the program. So you've got to wake up people that the status quo is no longer something that you can tolerate. We help people gain this back. He's an example. He's the best example I've ever seen, by the way. If you ask me about MS, I will tell you, early to moderate stage, I've seen major success. Late stage, very seldom. He was more than late stage. He was three decades with MS. He was unable to walk. He was advanced, he was four and a half, five in late stage. And that's what you get. So the sheathing's coming back, but a lot more is coming back. Ask his wife. <laughs> <laughs> okay, keep going. Yay. Yes. Um, I, I understand that you're saying that the raw food um, increases your frequency, the vibration in your body. The only food, food that increases frequency is, is uncooked food. Okay. So is there anything else other than food? The raw food that yes. does that as well. So the two and a half billion dollars worth of equipment that I have in the properties <laughs> is laser, electromagnetic, cyber scan, biofrequency testing, H wave treatments, the list goes on. And so medically we can do those things, but unless you're sustaining the frequency field by eating healthy, I can give you all the slick stuff in the world and it's gonna go right away. The fader light's gonna go down again. I have a quick question about Tens, the tens, yeah, tens unit is not nothing wrong with tens units, but it's really old school. I mean, it's it, it's much better than dope. I'd much rather have you have a tens unit. You all know what a tens unit is, right? It can actually diffuse the neurological pain, and in many cases, it relieves the need for medicines. And these medicines they give you today. I mean, do you realize the plague we have in this country with drug addiction, heroin addiction? When I was a kid, my grandfather, the Irish guy, used to bring me to, to New York, to the Bowery. How many of you are from New York? He used to bring me to the Bowery, and he used to show me bums on the street with their arms around, in, in cold. I mean, it would be snowing on these people, holding a wine bottle. And he'd say, kid, you don't get an education. He was a blue-collar guy. You don't get an education, that's what's going to happen to you. Today, heroin, the only people that took heroin were in the Bowery. Everyone's taking heroin. And by the way, now it's we know seven out of ten people that are heroin addicts started out of a doctor's office with oxycontin, oxycodone. How many of you realize that they put that on the market in 1850? They took it off the market in 1853 because it was addictive. Challenge anything I say. Bring me to your intellectual. Let me debate. Three years it was on the market in the mid 1800s. Took off. They put it back on the market. This is not, this is criminal activity, people. Yeah. And you're just so used to criminal activity in Washington and corporations, you just think, well, it can't get better. It can get better. Two letter word, no. I'm not going to do this anymore. I'm not going to eat meat because you told me to eat meat. You know how strong I am at, at my late 60s? I'm stronger today in my 50, 40, 20, and teens. And if your head gets clear, you start to see things in a way you don't see. The nonsense doesn't stick. Yes? Uh, two things. Um, one, what do you think of ESEAC-T? ESEAC-T was discovered uh, by Casey, a nurse in the 1920s in Canada, and it was a Native American tradition. Now, it's about number five on our list. Nothing wrong with it. And what we learned, and I had to learn this the hard way 30, 40 years ago, that even what really works all of the time, 
If you keep taking it, the body becomes familiar with it. So what I may do is I give you something really strong like haline. Haline is an antigenesis. It cuts blood flow off to cancer. Then I may give you A. And then I may give you this. I may give you that. And why? Because if you were opening your door, and every time you opened the door and it punched you in the nose, what would you do? You shut the door. So, so what I have to do is when we open the door, we have to hit you this way, we have to hit you this way, and nothing wrong with it. But buy the tea here and make sun tea. Don't cook it. You put it in the window and you put water, distilled water, and you sit it in the window. Florida is great for this. In 24 hours, you have sun tea and you haven't killed the phyto factors, the real medicine. Yes. Uh, Ryan, you mentioned 75 hertz. Is, is that something you can induce, like with a rifle machine, or it, it, would it help to do? We haven't. I mean, Dr. Hunt and I were working on that before her death three years ago, and we we're never able to do it. Uh, we think now, with the finding from last year, I wish he had stayed alive to see this. This is going to give us a format. Not me, but the physicist. I'm not capable of it. I'm working with a physicist out of Russia. We had this discussion three weeks ago, and so. He's on that path at this point. Are, are there other frequencies that might work as well? That's, I mean, some of the right frequencies heal, but they, they may not necessarily. But let's explain. Yesterday, not yesterday, two days ago, I talked to the man that was the biggest distributor of Rife machines in the country. And he concurred with me that Rife machine, at best, if you're lucky, it may work. This was the biggest distributor. He used okay. to make $150,000 a month distributing Rife machines. Why? Because Rife's genius was not the machine, it was the microscope. Fine. Now, do you all know who Rife was? San Diego, an American guy, and he basically was a workaholic. And he developed a microscope that supersedes electron microscopes. And by the way, when I got into an electron microscope 20 years ago, I wanted one. And then I found out how much it was, I didn't want it anymore. <laughs> but what you can see is like Disneyland for a guy like me. So bottom line is that he would get on that and sometimes not eat and not sleep for a day or two till he hit an electronic frequency that burst him. Yes. He did not leave behind a list. That's an embellishment. That's a, now, the good news is it can't hurt you. And the better news is that it may work for you. But it's not something that I use at Hippocrates because the science isn't clear on it. The science isn't clear. It's like shooting at a star at night. Will you hit it? Maybe. We almost have to change frequencies to find the right. Exactly. And, and you know, one of the things I learned is you had seven women at 60 years old with the same exact breast cancer in the same exact spot. They need different frequencies. That's the problem. Now, I have no problem with it, but I have a problem with people wasting time when they're on their march to death. That's what I have a problem with. Let's get on with it. Let's do what we know is better. And by the way, I wake up every day ready to throw everything out the window I've ever believed in the past. Because otherwise, I'm dangerous to you. If we find something better that is so much markedly moving forward in the right direction, you must move it. In my opinion, you must move in that direction. It's almost, again, criminal not to do that. And most people hold on to their theology philosophy from years ago. I became an expert 30 years ago, and that's what they are. They talk about the same nonsense they did yesterday and 30 years ago. We've got to move forward. And, boy, and, when we, and the Russians are really... Speeding up on this stuff now, yes. Uh, yeah, I just started reading a book about her. Oh, yeah. And grounding. And a friend of mine has her been grounded. He was trying to tell me it worked for him. But, uh, well, let, let, nice. Let's explain that. There was a, a very, very uh, well off CEO that retired young. He was about 60 some years old. He retired. He went out to Sedona, Arizona. All the open minded guys like Sedona. You know, it's like the new age hip place out there. And he'd been wearing, as I do all the time, shoes and suits his whole life. And he felt so liberated. He's in shorts and no shirt. He's walking with bare feet. And he had all these pains and all these problems and depression. And they start to go away. And he doesn't change. He didn't change his diet and do anything. He just started to feel better. <clears throat> so he was a bright guy with a lot of time on his hands. And he basically went to the University of New Mexico and Arizona and started to talk to some of the professors. And they said, sure, if you touch the ground, it has a frequency, and it's going to ground you. So he becomes the guy, not a scientist, although the scientists, the ones he spoke to at least, understood this. Basically, he brought grounding. And I know people like your friend that it hasn't worked for me. I grounded my bed, hasn't done a thing. But I have 
to my board members, Israelis, they sleep like babies since they've drowned. That could be partly placebo, I don't know, but a lot of people I know feel better. Well, that's what I want to do. Here I'm in California, I just got back. So I'm running on the beach in Coronado. Yeah. And I started running with Europe. And I know for me, I'm not sure if it's not a way. And so I ran for a half hour on the beach like that. It seems like it made a difference. Oh, it does make a difference. Less than that, I mean, yeah. Most likely you're right. I don't know that to be a fact, but most, the longer you're doing that, the better it is. Plus that, you and I are older. So our metabolisms move a lot different than a 20-year-old. They may need 10 minutes, we may need 40 minutes. So when you're moving, plus that, you know, nerves are sort of like rubber bands. If you keep binging them, eventually we know what happens. And that's what our nerves get like. Yes? Can a model display be reversed? Oh, yes. Absolutely. Dysplasia is easy stuff. That's precancerous stuff. And so, I mean, remember, people come to us and reverse brain cancers. So what is it? Four-pound brain cancers. And I'm not joking. Uh, so the reality is dysplasia. That's easy stuff. And by the way, docs tend to embellish dipl dysplasia. Uh, with women, and I don't know the other statistics, so forgive me, but with women with breast cancer, there's only about a 5% chance that dysplasia will actually become cancer. But what they now do is they put that into a category. They do operations, chemotherapy, radiation. You know, that's it. Just like with men with prostate. The most revealing study came out uh, a number of years ago from Europe. Now, there's small little countries in Europe that do not have great economics. And when they suspect a man has prostate cancers, they don't biopsy, they don't treat. So somebody finally did the data on that. And they looked back at the countries that did what we do, which are most, Germany, England, France, Sweden, Denmark, they do exactly what we do here. And then the small countries that didn't do it. And by the way, there was only one out of 78 men that died of prostate cancer when you don't touch it. 48, 48 out of 78 in our countries that touch it. So you touch it, you spread it. Just like last year, they had 9,500 young women take off a breast that didn't have cancer in it because they, they don't say this, but they know you cut this breast, it spills and goes over here, and we might as well take it off now. Just like they do with, you know, BRCA gene. You know how many people I've seen with BRCA gene 30, 40 years ago never had cancer because they changed their lifestyle. And, yeah, what ends up happening is this is crazy world. You know, you know who's that... Beautiful girl with the big lips. Angelina Jolie. Yeah. So she was sort of the poster child. Let's go and get our breast shot up. The reality is, this is crazy. Crazy. And why? They do this to women. You women are have been so well trained to be subservient your whole life. You let them do things men would never do. Friends, they start to do penolectomies, we'll be marching. <laughs> I'll be the first one out there with the damn sign. Not me. <laughs> Yes. Well, number one, you stop eating things that clog the lymph. All animal fats, uh, all sugars that act like cotton candy, all sugars, and you need to get on a trampoline. Yeah. It's the least expensive and most effective, I'm going to tell you. If you can get put your favorite music on and bounce around for 30 minutes a day on that, you're going to be a different person. When we get people to do that, when they have, I mean, really serious lymph problems, these things go down like it's going out of style. Nobody tells you that because they don't make money on it. <laughs> Your body needed low cholesterol. Your body produces cholesterol. Anyone that thinks you need to eat cholesterol is completely bonkers. Your body produces cholesterol. And so healthy bodies eating healthy food produce cholesterol. If your cholesterol went down, some schmo doctor who doesn't know what she or he's talking about scared you. Basically, say, oh, your cholesterol went down. They should say, hi, your cholesterol went down. They say, hey. <laughs> the total opposite, you know, the opposite of what they should do. I mean, Unless your cholesterol is 60 or 70, I'm happy. It was like 60. Yeah. Well, for how long? I don't know, because I started eating so much animal fat to make it. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's like absolutely crazy. You have to understand that your body is going to make what you need. 
In your case, that's what your body needs. Unless you've had a chronic 60 for years, then I worry. That means something. But otherwise, it doesn't. I have to look at the LDL, the high-density lipid, all the other things. Yeah. Keep going. You're running out of questions? Yes. <laughs> Two books there that are really almost the manual. This is healthful cuisine, it shows you how to make it, and you have life force there or living food for optimum health. It gives you like an eighth grade level understanding of what we've learned over the last 61 years. So again, listen closely. Every person who's come to Hippocrates since 1956 is immediately on Sunday put on a raw food diet. Do we see anything dangerous? No. The opposite. It's all about a state of the mind. Now, do you like to eat raw food? I hated this food. I didn't dislike it. I, I loathed it. I hated it. it. I couldn't eat it. I would gag when I ate it. But psychologically, I knew it was good for me. You know why? Every single creature on earth, except humans, eat 100% raw diet. We share this planet with millions of other species. They said, my dog doesn't eat raw food. In nature, your dog would eat raw food. You think deer walk along and say, hey, let's have a cook stove. 100% of every species on Earth eat 100% raw diet. We're the enigma. And who are the sick ones? We're the only species even vaguely as sick as we are. It's outrageous. I mean, it really is. And that's all wonderful biology, but how about 1956 to now, watching people come back to life, and those of us who adapt this lifestyle and keep our head together and exercise, we just don't age. You and I are probably similar age. So you can be frightened or you can do it. You know, try it. You know, I hated it and I tried it. And now I love it. <laughs> no, I wouldn't eat another way if you, you held a gun to my head. I said, shoot me. I'm not going to do anything else. This is how I live. And you're going to like it because your body's been crying out from the time you're a little girl, a little boy, saying, please feed me this food. And it's not easy at first. You're going to feel upset stomach. and you may, I had diarrhea. My head was spinning. What I, I won't say what I smell like, but I used to stick my own head out of the bathroom. <laughs> when I hit it, I'm not sure. <laughs> it, was un, un, it was an exorcism. That's all I can say. Yes? Um, two questions. Is there, um, it's, I know each individual is different, but a uh, supplement that you find? There's only one something? supplement I can look you in the eye and say everyone should take, and that's B12. 70% of the population in the world lack B12. Meat, dairy, fish eaters have 8% higher incidence than vegans. Raw vegans have the least, but I'm going to tell you, even a raw vegan, the B12. And it has to be a bacterial form, a living form. Because most of it on the market is a, a chemical made out of petrochemicals. So you don't want that. And then do How you many of you read my book, Supplements Exposed? 91% of the supplements on the market are deadly chemicals. Oh, you have that. How much B12? You just need a little bit on a consistent basis. So if you what's, have 100, what's a good 50 one? MCGs a day. Uh -huh. and, and by the way, after about a year, 90% of you cut it in half. Save money. You know, take the bottle, that, you know, the kind that I would take, you cut them in half. One night you watch a movie and cut them in half. And that's all you need. So then do you recommend like just one major or one main meal no. a day and two? No. I take 35 <laughs> supplements every morning. Five algaes I take. Often I take pollen. I take B12, I take minerals, I take on and off protein powders, and so there's a lot of things I take. Now, here's what you have to know. When I first joined the team in the mid-70s at Hippocrates, we thought, no, you get everything you need from the food. I was the evil guy that brought the studies and tested. So 1980-81, we brought tested. Even those of us that eat like saints sometimes lack nutrients. Why? Because we have, we're enduring something today that your grandparents didn't endure, stress loads. And the greatest and most effective way to knock nutrition out of your body is be stressed. And even I, grant you, it happens only every four years, and I get massive amounts of this. There should be no biological reason. I lack a little bit of magnesium, a little bit of zinc. Now, nobody wants to lack magnesium. It's a muscle relaxant. 
And by the way, what's the most important muscle in your body? Your heart. Your heart. <laughs> heart. Your heart. And how about zinc? Whoa. I mean, out of the top five nutrients research of importance, zinc is right there. Number one, glutathione. Ooh, I take that. Glutathione's jet fuel. Jet fuel. Yes? What about vitamin C? Vitamin C, a lot of you get that from food. If you took uh, an organic red or yellow pepper every day, that's what we do at Hippocrates. Just tell you to eat that. And we make an incredible vitamin C. You can get it here, too. Food-based vitamin C from the vitamin code. Excellent. Excellent one. But the reality is most of you don't need it. Let's be really honest with you. I see very few people lacking vitamin C, very, very few people lacking calcium. With women, it's one out of 125, not calcium. Vitamin C is one out of 210. And we do a highly sophisticated test called spectra cell tests. And we, if you lack it, we'll know. If you have it, we'll know. I'd like to sell you things. I make it, but the truth is you don't need it. <laughs> so you had a spectra cell? Fifty MCGs, and about a year later, cut them in half. Because once it's cumulative, when you take a proper form of bacteria, that's all you need. Is and, um, it harmful to take? No, not the bacterial form. Five thousand. No, I don't, I don't oh, no, you don't need five thousand. How do I know I'm getting a bacterial form? Well, I don't know. no. What's a good brand? Can you just say that? They they have one here that's a food based. So it has to be food based. It has to come from food. They create cultures for it. You know, everything else is made in a laboratory. Made out of how many of you know that most vitamin B is made out of coal tar? I drove here on coal tar. How many of you know that turpentine is what they make about eighty seven percent of the vitamin E out of? And most of the, the motor oil you have in your car out there is where they get most of these from. And I'm not joking, by the way. Challenge me on this thing. Yes? I didn't hear you, love. Sleep is a big problem. If I had asked people when I began my work, how many of you had a sleep problem in a group like this, I'd be surprised if one person raised their hand. Now, let's really be honest here. How many of you here do not sleep well enough? What do you call well enough? Well, here's what we know about sleep. The average person throughout our life needs eight to eight and a half hours. That we do know. And how we know that there's wonderful doctors who are sleep researchers. My favorite, after reading 688 books on it, is a guy with a name similar to mine with a D, Delement, out of Stanford. And if you're a reader, especially if you're a reader who doesn't sleep because you have time to read it. <laughs> He wrote the book. Hands down, the best book, the best research. He's still teaching. He's almost 90. It's called The Promise of Sleep. And what I think is, number one, it's environment. You've got to get, and they're not expensive, you've got to blacken your room. Number two, those new age sound machines, they work. There's massive research on that out of Denmark, Germany, and Sweden. So you get on the Internet for about $30, $40. They're waves, they're rain. Put them on. They really do work. Because your mind hears that pleasant sound and takes care of the car outside. You know, that type of uh, As far as herbal supplements, I haven't found one that works universally for all, except one your government took off the market because it worked for everyone. And so if you happen to ever go out of Puritan America, where they have corporate interest in their mind, not your health, uh, and go to civilized countries like Canada, They'll have one called Jen Bu Young. J I N B U N B U H N. Jin Bu Young. And Jin Bu Young is a Chinese medicine that 95% of the people went out like a light. And why they got it off the market? It's putting everyone to sleep, and it cost about $4 for a 10 day supply. So FDA from Miami actually called it pocket. They knew. How much did we sell that? 100, 200 a year? They called us and said, get it off your shelf. This is how pervasive these people are. Wow. And that goes back 20 wow. years. But any other country in the world, you can still buy that. Can't get it on the internet. Jin Buyang. Yes? What about infrared saunas? I take a sauna every single day. I'll go anywhere in the world and lecture. If you don't have a sauna, I don't go anywhere. And how that happened is my good friend, Dr. Coyne, West Palm Beach, 
uh, was the man they picked to do the token study on hyperthermia. How many of you know what hyperthermia is? So if you lived in a civilized country like Germany and you had cancer, the doctor would say, we're going to heat your body up six, seven degrees because it kills cancer, kills virus, kills bacteria, etc. So very wealthy Americans that were sponsoring the Democratic and the Republican Party got pissed off and said, how come I have to drag my wife or my husband or my child to Europe? So they did a token study to pacify these donors. And they picked Dr. Coyne. Why they picked Coyne is he had five expertise in medicine. You have two, you're a genius. And he was the most humble, beautiful American guy you'll ever meet in your life. Big, tall, lanky guy, about six foot four. And I got to meet him and knew him for several years. He's still alive. He's retired in North Carolina now in his 90s. Uh, he was a man that went to Germany and had helped semen create MRIs. He was a guy that sat in his late 60s, I would go into the room, he'd have seven or eight televisions, and all over the Caribbean, South America, they were shooting MRI pictures, and he was writing down what they should tell the patient. Just a nice, beautiful man. And after the five-year study, he came into my office. He had six uh, doctors at universities around the country, six university hospitals doing the research. He said, Brian, hyperthermia works, but better yet, take infrared saunas, daily for an hour if you have cancer. I said, why, why, why is it better? He said, because I can only give you once a week hyperthermia. I have to give you anti-convulsion medicine. Otherwise, you'll have seizures. You know how you get heat stroke? So that we have to give you anti-convulsion medicine. And he said, one time a week is not like heating your body up a half a degree to a degree six, seven days a week. I take 20 minutes a day. But listen, I'm not joking about it. I'm not exaggerating. Tomorrow I will be in a sauna. I never go a day without a sauna. I don't go anywhere in the world without a sauna. What would you recommend for the well, temperature? There's only one in the world now that is the best, and it's called clear light because it has no electromagnetic. That's the one. Clear light. Once I learned about that, my staff hates me. As soon as I find the best thing, I say, everything we've done for the last five years, rip it out. And sometimes, we like last year, I put $750,000 worth of organic bedding, every guest that comes to us. Why? Because I've been on organic bedding. The Institute had a lot of it until, you know, 25 years ago. But I got one two years ago. I felt like a crook. I couldn't let you sleep on something that wasn't like that. So my accountant said, you're out of your mind. You're going to go out of business. I said, well, if we go out of business, great. Well, I'll have beds until then. <laughs> yes. What? I'm sure you have it. You just look up clear light. Do you know? What, no, I'm not, I'm not sure. On the you can Google, you can Google it and yeah, find Google. it. There are places as far as gyms and stuff. You want to tweet and Google together? What? Um, <laughs> what I always thought they were talking dirty when they said that. I get my grandchild. Two-year-olds know this better than me. <laughs> uh, no. Good question. So when I'm at the gym, I'm doing the Scandinavian saunas. The Why? Because that's what they have there. So I work out for two hours, two and a half hours, and I go into the, to the sauna. But let me tell you, an infrared is overwhelmingly better. You get 87%. Listen, 87% more heavy metals and chemicals out of the body with an infrared. Now, all infrareds are good. The only reason I tell you to take that, I'm not getting a kickback, is that has no electromagnetic. I won't ever take a, a penny from any of these companies. And what temperature did you suggest? I well, don't, you know, you're going to spike. Anything. It needs 120, it will say, but you're going to spike to 150. Yep. So, so even though optimal, it only says, yeah, let me explain how this works. A normal sauna is like getting into an oven. That's why a lot of you hate saunas. Sauna. Okay. At first, I hated it. And so it's like getting into an oven. So it's heating you from the outside and then slowly permeates in. Infrared doesn't do that. It's a frequency that heats the cell from the inside. Another little secret, if you have a normal sauna, you don't need to buy a new sauna, buy an element from Clearlight. I was ready to rip my element out, my old sauna out, and the guy said to me, you're crazy, keep both of them in there. And I'm so damn busy, it spikes me and gets me hotter quicker. So I'm heating from the outside. Now you don't need to do this, but if you have one of these, or buy one used or something, put both in there. You're heating from the outside and the inside, and the friction actually you get hotter quicker. Yes. Are you are you saying the saunas and the LA fitness is good? Sure, it's good. Maybe dirty, but good. <laughs> That's where I go to LA fitness. For how long? 
Uh, when you're in that sauna, at least 20 minutes, if you're doing it all the time. I think 10, 20, start on 20. And living in this uh, Florida, I mean, I'm from L.A., and yeah. you're living in this Florida, and you go in a sauna. What, are you kidding me? The frequency. We're in a steam bath, not a sauna. <laughs> we need a sauna. <laughs> you need the steam bath. <laughs> My youngest child's in L.A. He's going, he just told us last week he's going to go to medical school. Okay, who's new? That's three or four more questions. We're passing on information for the sauna since there were so many questions. Uh, there's also, anybody who's interested, there's special advantages. Oh, yeah. And let me say this. Did you all sign up for the on the iPad to get the magazine? Okay, where is the iPad? And did, some of the people are saying they didn't sign up. Okay, perfect. I'm going to pass that around again for everybody. Well, hold on. Let's get new people. Yes. High blood pressure. What's your thoughts on high blood pressure and uh, naturally uh, controlling it? Well, number one, if you don't have a kidney disorder, the first thing we look at, less than 5% of the people would have high blood pressure for kidney. But we got to rule that out. Because sometimes I've been surprised. I used to think I knew. I didn't know. You know, you'd look at a person and say, the renal area. So every standard blood test, the creatine, the bun, you look at that. And if you rule that out, 95% of you have blood pressure because you're stressed, you're not exercising, and you're eating animal fat. So we get rid of the animal fat, we reduce the stress. As you saw, the respiration response work done by Benson out of Harvard. Unreductive. You see uh, Dean Ornish, the work he did at 10 major universities on blood pressure. I mean, blood pressure comes down so quick at Hippocrates, your head spins. Why? Well, number one, you're not working, you're in a relaxed environment, you're not eating animal-based foods, and we're having you move. You know, and we don't say, get up and run 10 miles. If you're not used to that, you have to walk. Matter of fact, we now know uh, from, from Dr. Kenneth Cooper, how many of you know Dr. Cooper? Who, by the way, is... He's the guy that put running on the map. 65 years ago, C Cooper was running, and everyone said, oh, you look like hell, you're going to get sick. He was a medical doctor. So he quit his practice and focused for the last 65 years or more on the research. He has a Cooper Center down in Texas. Wonderful man. He's a type A personality. He's now saying, guess what? Walking is just as good as running. And by the way, I'm not a fan of running. Kills your knees. Kills your knees, your hip. And every damn runner I know at 50, 60, 70 years old comes to me. They need hip replacements. They need knee replacements. If you were with bare feet running, that's a different story. And I don't care how expensive the shoes are, you're pounding cement. That's not a natural thing. So this is correct. Are there supplements I would give you? Sure, but each case is different. So we do these very elaborate tests, these very elaborate scans. I wish hospitals did. And from that, we get, bing, this is what's for you. Yes, sir. She's been experiencing lately low blood pressure. Yeah, low blood pressure Which is not a couple of times she thought she was going to faint. You know, we, yeah. What we know about low blood pressure, unless it gets so low that you're passing out, you're going to live longer than him and me. I always have about the normal, 120, 80. Low blood pressure is a good thing. Anna Maria, 90, 60. Always 90, 90, 95, 65, so that's okay? My wife. But I feel, I feel this thing. Especially in the night. When I, and, and I so don't know. So you constantly understand. feel dizzy? No, no. no. If she's lying and she goes to turn When, when I'm in bed and when I turn it to my left, it starts to feel Well, that may not be the blood pressure, love. We've got to look. We've got to, we've got to look at inner ear for that. And that's pretty common where you get disoriented. So I would, I would go and their doctors have a role too. They're not, you don't just completely. Diagnostics are great at it. Just don't do what they say. <laughs> have, go to an eye, a good one. And you have good ones, University of South Florida. Eye, ear, nose specialist. Have them look at inner ear. Uh, and that's number one. And by the way, if you, if you take more celery juice, it's going to naturally put up the blood pressure a little bit. You don't want sodium. You want organic sodium. Well, the green juice is going to help you in every yeah. other way, but it actually dilutes your blood. Uh -huh. So, you know, have you ever noticed when you're on blood pressure medicine or blood anticoagulants, they say, don't eat green food. Yeah. Uh -huh. So an intelligent <laughs> patient would say, why don't I give up the drugs and just eat the green food? <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, it is dangerous. If you're taking an anticoagulant, and then you further do the natural thing of diluting your blood, you could have a stroke. 
So the real answer is, let's get rid. The only one that ever should take a, uh, an anticoagulant are people with pacemakers. And by the way, vitamin E would work, but maybe there's 5% it wouldn't work. So that's the only one if you have a pacemaker. Nobody else. Vitamin E is better. Yes? No, I'll get to you next. You're pretty. <laughs> Ablation's not a, there's a few medical things they do. That's one of them I like, actually. How old of a guy is this? Yeah, that's young. So if he were 84, maybe it wouldn't work. 64, there's a big chance this is going to work. Ablation is not the worst thing in the world. But the cause of it, now here's the cause of it, long-term magnesium deficiency. That's six out of ten people. I'm in Italy 15 years ago. An Italian doctor's next to me. I love the Italians. They have a great sense of humor. He says to me, hey, you will figure out H. pylori and make a fibrillation of the heart. So I, I said, can you repeat that? I said, no, you're wrong. Uh, H. pylori gives you ulcers. He said, no, I've been figuring it out. He said, it, it actually make an A. fibrillation. And it touched me. There was something honest about that guy. I went back. I asked some of the guests who had A. fib, can we do H. pylori test? Three out of ten people that have A. fib have H. pylori. It doesn't stay here. It gets up and eats the tissue of the heart. And the heart is like a drum head. If you have a really fresh drum head and you tighten it properly and tune it, it bounces beautifully. If it's not tight, because it's degraded, it's going to make these things. So there's a lot of factors that docs, not that they're bad people, they just don't know these things. I didn't know it. If I didn't sit next to that guy, I wouldn't be able to tell you what I just told you. And by the way, ever since, we've been doing that. One more. Can I? One more. I, 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 She's I, the pretty one. No. She's from L.A. <laughs> uh, my first drink in the morning is... Uh, Whiskey? Coffee. Uh, <laughs> That's what drink. they do out west. Uh, my first drink in the morning is squeezed lemon in hot water. Good for you. Now, lemon is an alkalizer. The two or best and least expensive person? alkalizers Warm. are raw apple Warm. cider vinegar and lemon. And this is a great thing for you, especially in the morning. No matter who you are, no matter what you eat, when I get up in the morning, I'm more acid than I am any other time of the day. Because through the night, your body eliminates. It's toxic. And you know, you feel, once you do that long enough, as I do, you feel great. I've been doing it so That's why you look so sexy? No. <laughs> Where in L.A. do you live? West Hollywood. Oh, West Hollywood's good. You know what I love about West Hollywood? It used to be like this. The gays moved in, cleaned it up. I love it. <laughs> when the gays come into my neighborhood, I said, come on! Bring them up. Sunset Boulevard. Oh, yeah. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. That, that's where they live. Well, I love L.A. I love everything about California. I think it's good out there. Yes. Um, how do you feel about the acting scope and my impulse outside of the Thorpe Institute? I don't know enough. I know of it, but I can't really... Comment on it because I don't know enough. And then um, I have the bottom, the infrared sauna. Can yeah. you also get the same thing from the infrared body wrap if you get the temperature up you, to the level? You the can. Uh, you know, it's not as convenient. I mean, okay. people buy portable ones. I mean, look, it's money's an issue. You right. buy a portable one for five hundred dollars. Plus, a lot of people have little tiny places. My father, who's ninety now, he's, I'm going to go over and sleep at his place tonight. <coughs> he lives here in, in New Tampa. I fought with this guy for 40 years. Get a sauna. I don't want to he finally now, at 88 years old, gets, every time I come over, he's in the sun. Did you say that you only have one meal a day? Yes, I only eat one meal a day. What time of the day do you The wrong time. I'm going to tell you if you're going to eat, the big meal should be lunch. That's what you should do. But what do I do? I'm working all day. I'm busy, so I go home and eat. Is it as good? Nowhere close. Nowhere close. So you should always eat your meal in the middle of the day. And I'm not saying you should eat one meal a day. No. And by the way, there's some young people here who need two meals a day. When you get older, your body's telling you not to eat. And I, and I know that what, what we're going to do is I'm going to sign. They're going to kick us out of here. Thanks for coming tonight. God bless and thanks to Stuart.